Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin using logarithmic regression. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So you guys know me, I, I do enjoy modeling the price of Bitcoin using logarithmic regression because I do think it is essentially the, the best way to model Bitcoin's long-term price behavior. Generally speaking, the idea is, I mean, I know it, it doesn't sound very complicated, but it's just to buy when Bitcoin is in the lower regression band. And if you can, to, to sort of take profits when it hits the upper regression band, right? Of course, this is always easier said than done. And, and even in the 2021 bull market, we even put in a new all-time high over here at 69K, which wasn't even back in the regression band but we in fact did make it to the upper regression band when we went to around $64,000. So it sort of just zigzags back and forth, right? You know, we, we go up, we come down and then up. And what you'll notice is that we'll spend significant periods of time in the lower regression band, right? I mean, this is nothing new. If you go back to the last market cycle, we spent several months in it. I mean, obviously we, we did poke our head a little bit above it back in 2019, which I think surprised everyone, including myself. I was thinking we would actually just sort of continue to move along here. We actually went up to the upside and then we, we kind of corrected for it by going too far to the downside. But more or less, this was the accumulation phase for the next bull run. And then if you go back to look at the prior bear market before that, it took us into the regression band. And then we just stayed within that regression band until, you know, until we finally popped our head above in 2017 and then went to the upper regression band. And I would argue that we're just sort of in a very similar phase right now. It's boring, right? The, the market is not very volatile right now. It, it seems like Bitcoin is just inching along, right? Like it's barely moving. But one of the reasons is because that is the typical price behavior of Bitcoin when you get in the regression band, right? Like it just is what it is. We've seen this many times before. If you remember to the beginning of 2019, the price action was relatively boring. It was relatively boring in 2015 and for a good part of 2016 as well. I mean, I know the price of Bitcoin did slowly go up in 2016, which was great, but it wasn't like we were experiencing like a, a blow off top parabolic mania move. It was sort of just a slow and steady increase. So recently Bitcoin has been doing some similar things, right? It's just sort of slowly moving up, but it's not moving up very, very quickly. Now, one of the things I wanted to remind you of is if you go look at say the, the this logarithmic regression band, this is the same thing on TradingView, but this is on my website. If you take price divided by non-bubble data, which is the green line, essentially, you get something that looks like this. And, you know, I look at this and what I, what I see is, look, it's an accumulation phase. I mean, it's not financial advice. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that it is, but when I look at this metric, I can't help but think that we're just in simply a long-term accumulation phase, whether Bitcoin's at 17.5K or 25K or 20K, or if it goes to 15K, or if you go back up to the upper regression band, which is all the way up, um, let me let me actually go over here and look at it. You can see it's all the way up at almost $30, $38,000. What's interesting is a lot of people here, I'm sure have a hard time imagining a $38,000 Bitcoin, but we were there not that long ago, right? It wasn't that long ago that Bitcoin was in fact at $38,000. And arguably, you know, between the 30 to $40,000 range is where Bitcoin should be by the next Bitcoin having. The reason I say that is if the if you look at at where the, the the prior halvings were, we had one over here in May of 2020. You can see that Bitcoin was in fact at its fair value fit to non-bubble data at the halving over here, and then in July of 2016, again once again, I mean you can see that it, it was right there, right? It was at the halving that that Bitcoin was at its fair value fit to again non-bubble data. And then if you go look at at late 2012, you'll see again, right, that, that Bitcoin was at around its fair value fit to non-bubble data. Now, I should at least take one step back and try to explain the lower regression band. Now remember, the lower regression band is fit to, as I keep saying, non-bubble data, right? It is fit to data that is not part of this mania phase. These phases where we just go straight up to these blow off tops, I don't care about that data when fitting the green curve, okay? I only care about the boring times, the accumulation phases. The reason for that 
is because I, and this is what I said back in 2019, is that why fit it to something that is an irrational time in the market, right? When the market is just going parabolic, that seems like a very irrational time in the market. Why not fit it to data when, when the tourists are no longer here? And that is why, I mean, we find ourselves once again down in this region. And now that we have more data, as I've said, for the entirety of 2022, at the end of this year, I will refit. My goal is to refit the lower regression band. If you remember, so far, it's only fit to data through about right here. And then it did a pretty good job of continuing to show the accumulation phase for that, you know, preceding that, that future bull market. And so I don't think it'll actually affect it that much. My guess is that it might bring the fair value fit to non-bubble data down by one or, you know, maybe a couple thousand dollars, a few thousand dollars. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. If, if you want to figure out or you want to, if you're curious what the fair value is of Bitcoin right now fit to the non-bubble data, it's actually 24,949. So we're just below it. What's interesting is if we zoom in on price action, it seems like it's kind of holding some level of resistance at that fair value, right? Like if you look at the fair value right here, fit to non-bubble data, you can see that Bitcoin is sort of slowly moving up to it. And I mean, I hope, I mean, I, I personally hope that it breaks out to the upside because I do think it would provide much needed relief to Bitcoin. I know a lot of people have, are, are underwater, but if it breaks to the downside, it doesn't mean that it's still a bad time to accumulate. I still think it has a great time to accumulate um, as we sort of just slowly prepare for, for the next bull market. Now, the other interesting thing I think to look at is the fair value fit to all data. Okay, so I want to take a quick look at that one. Now, the reason why this one is interesting is because the fair value when you fit it to all data is actually a lot higher. So remember, when you fit it to the non-bubble data, it's currently at around 25K or just below 25K. When you fit it to all data, it says the fair value of Bitcoin is around 42K or just below $42,000. Now, what you'll notice is that Bitcoin likes to spend some time above the fair value, but it also likes to take its time below the fair value as well. So you go above and then you go below it, right? You go above and then below. And then for 2021, we were mostly above and then now we're below it. So the, the reason why this is important is because, you know, this, I think, it should just be seen as some type of long accumulation phase preceding the next Bitcoin bull run, okay? No one knows how long it's going to take. Normally, it, it can take a year, right? But that doesn't mean that it has to, right? I mean, it, it was interesting in, in 2018 when we dropped below, you know, we actually poked our head back above the fair value before coming back down again. So I look at the logarithmic regression charts for Bitcoin and say, if you look at it, right, compared to the, the fair value fits all data, we're undervalued, okay? And you could say that the, price, the actual price of Bitcoin right now compared to the fair value is about 40% 40, 40 below it. But if you go, you know, if you go back and look at it with respect to the non-bubble data, we're right at it, right? Like we're just below what the fair value is. Now, again, I, I do think once this is refit to include data from, you know, March and April of 2019, and then all of this data as well, and then all of this data, it might shift it down just slightly. So it might make the fair value closer to, 23k or something um, if we were to refit it at the end of the year or 24k but i don't really think it's going to, to, to play a huge role in this so really i mean i know there's all sorts of of, of trading strategies that you could employ to, to navigate these times but to be completely honest i i think the the way to look at this is to say look it's a fairly decent time to dca into the market doesn't necessarily mean we can't we can't go back down but in terms of in terms of the macro scale, um, this is a, a much more attractive phase than, than we were just about you know a year ago or even half a year ago for that matter. So I, I do think that the the biggest things to look for are things like the bull market support band. And the reason I say that is because normally it takes that 20 week estimate going back into the regression band or going below the fair value for us to have a realistic chance to get back above it. Um, at least after you go through, you know, these these bear markets, right? It doesn't tend to, to break above over here. Obviously, this was the exception, which I, I actually thought we would we would break above it because I thought the, the cycle would go on for a lot longer. But here you can see once again, the 20 week is coming down to us. Okay, 
So let's see what happens as the price gets closer to the bull market support band and if we can break back above. If we can, remember we still need to we need, need to hold it as support. If you if you look at 2019, you can see once we got back above it, Bitcoin just exploded to the upside, you know, another 3x or something. If you look at 2015, Bitcoin came into the regression band, popped back above, got rejected by it, went back down, and it was after really it was after the 20 week got below the fair value that Bitcoin was able to actually hold it as support later. Okay, you can see here the 20 week was not below the fair value and we got up and then we came straight back down. So that's why I'm saying like I, I think everyone should sort of go into this phase or we've been in this phase for a few months, but continue to sort of manage your expectations in this phase, like go into the right, go in with the right expectations. I'm just sort of assuming that it's going to just be chop city for a while. And um, and we're just going to be slowly gearing up for you know for the next bull run. It's my opinion. Okay, I don't I don't really think these markets are going to be um, extremely exciting uh, for a little while. I mean, we certainly arguably we need to get through 2022 um, and then into 2023. The nice thing about 2023 is in the having's in sight because the having will be in early 2024. Um, of course, there could be people trying to front run that as well. But anyways, I hope this video was useful. Uh, I do actually want to quickly go look at that other chart for the for the fair value over here and take the price divided by the fair value. And you can kind of see that, you know, in, in this in this first accumulation phase over here, we, we went down to um, a, a about if you look at the price divided by the fair value, it looks like it bottomed out around 0.274 or so, right? Somewhere in that area, maybe yeah, 0.274 or so. In this bear market, it, it bottomed out around 0.309. Okay, and then in this one, you can see during the March, the, the pandemic wick, it, it bottomed out around 0.349. The lowest it's gone so far is about 0.462 or so. Okay, so when I look at this and, and people say, well, is the bottom in? I think it's irrelevant. I mean, if it's not in, it's probably not that far away. And there's a good chance it is isn't. And I think it's just, I think it's worthwhile to treat this as a long-term accumulation phase for Bitcoin. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com, and I will see you next time. Bye.